Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today we're going to get into mushroom log cultivation, how to select the wood, chop it and get it prepared for inoculation. You may have seen my other videos about how to inoculate logs and grow them, how to set up an area that's really nice for harvesting and soaking your logs. Check those videos out in the description. So to figure this all out, I've got some notes here. I get all my spawn and tools and all that from Field and Forest. Uh, it's fieldforest.net. And on their website, they have a fantastic resource of all the different types of trees and the mushroom strains that go along with those best. And they'll give you their best recommendation and then some other ones that are possible to use for that strain as well. Then um, on Field and Forest, I, I, I selected all of my different strains that I wanted and made some notes about them. So um, this year I'll be doing some shiitake that is more of a winter strain, so it, it does better fruiting in colder temperatures. So for shiitake, the best tree would be oak. And that's according to my little list here. They can also grow on beech and sweet gum. I also have both of those types of trees in these woods. I'm also doing lion's mane, comb's tooth, some more types of oyster, reishi, and then wine caps, which are a wood mulch type of mushroom and that I'll be showing in a future video. So lots of different new ones that I'm doing this year. And for the wood selection, how did I figure all that out? I'm standing right next to a tulip poplar, which is gonna grow great with my oyster mushrooms. So for the oysters this year, I'm doing a 5.5 pound of sawdust spawn of blue dolphin, which is a winter strain. And then I'm doing a golden warm strain at 2.5 pounds. Um, and Field and Forest says that a 5.5 pound will do about 20 to 25 logs if they are four to six inches in diameter and about 40 inches long. So right now we're almost to the end of December and this is a great time to cut down your logs. They need to be in winter dormancy. So anywhere from the fall when about 30% of the leaf color has changed through winter until the buds start to swell, um, the, the trees start to wake up for spring because then they're gonna be putting all that energy out um, to create more leaves and eventually fruit, flowers, all that good stuff. So we wanna get the logs when they're in the winter or fall in that dormancy period when all that energy is being put back into the wood. Once we cut it down, we're gonna let the logs sit for at least two weeks, two to four weeks, and in that window is when we will inoculate these logs. Now, how did I figure out what types of trees are what? I think what the best time of year is to do this in the fall when you can still see the leaves on your trees and you can identify them, or even in the spring and summer, start identifying trees that you would like to cut down to turn into logs. So, uh, a few ways I did this. Um, I have been studying the last year trying to learn my trees in these woods so I could identify them. Also, there's a few apps that you can download where you can take a picture and it will roughly tell you what the tree is. Sometimes it's correct and sometimes it is not. Um, one that I'm using is called Picture This, Google Lens. There's a few more in the app store if you look it up. Just try a few of them out. And if, both, if a couple of them are saying the same thing, that's probably it. Um, if there's leaves on the tree, obviously it's much, it's much easier. The bark, um, it works a lot of the time. So I used the combination of all those things and just looking at pictures online to make sure that this was in fact the right type of tree. Now, oak is in general the best. It's, for, it's the best for the most amount of trees. So if you defaulted to oak, um, that would be great. Now getting into which tree do I want to cut down? Well, don't cut down a tree that's all by itself. It's going to grow up and be this big, beautiful oak tree. You know, select ones that are either, you know, right next to other more established trees that need to come out. Maybe there's two growing right next to each other that need to go. Um, as I go out here to find and locate a few more trees, I'll take you through that process of how I'm determining which ones I want to take out. Why don't we start here with this first tulip poplar. So right now we're kind of standing at the edge of my property where uh, everything turns into a pine forest. And then there's a lot of tulip poplars in this area. And the tulip poplar puts off a really cool flower in the summertime. When you cut this wood, it has a very unique smell. So this, this year when I was chopping down other trees, I really learned what the tulip poplar looked like. The tulip poplars, 
They don't do a lot for me. I'm looking for a lot more trees that have forage or they're hardwoods, things like that. They're gonna be good for my pigs. They can eat the acorns. Tulip poplar, you know, I'm glad to have it around. They're nice and straight. They make good beams. They make, you know, things like that. So that's a good reason to have some of them growing. And I've got another tulip poplar right next to it um, that I will let grow up and become bigger. This is also the right size. Down here at the bottom, it gets to about a six inch diameter. So going all the way up, I'll be able to get a lot of great logs out of this. Of course, I'm gonna use my chainsaw here. I definitely, the steel farm boss, the MS-271, this is what I would recommend anybody get out there. This has plenty of power, but not so much power that it would be too scary for um, a beginner. I started out with a smaller saw, which I, that was really great for me to learn the ropes before I upgraded to something more powerful, um, but really like this chainsaw a lot. I'm not dealing with a huge tree here. I'm not gonna, I probably won't cut out a wedge on most of these if I can avoid it. Um, just so I can use as much of the log as possible. So I'll just come down here at the bottom and start cutting across. Maybe I'll put a little wedge in on the other side. My chainsaw here is just about 40 inches. So I use this as my measurement. So each log will be about this size. And the reason that you're looking for that four to six inch diameter and about a 40 inch long log is that's just the ideal size for, as far as weight goes. If you were to pick these up for moving them and also soaking them, pulling them back out and the amount of life that they're gonna have. The more diameter, the longer that these will produce for you for years and years. So there's a, a fine line there and that's why we're looking for something about this size. Okay, so that's six logs. We're gonna need about 24 more tulip poplars. So I'm gonna go get all those and then let's move on to another type of tree. Okay, you guys, I'm here with a beech tree now. This is gonna be great for the lion's mane and the comb's tooth. And here's a great example here of why I'm selecting this beech. Well, behind me here, I have an oak tree. This is something I'd like to save. I want it to grow bigger. And then behind me here, this is a black cherry, I believe. And this is a, a tree that its leaves are actually toxic to animals, uh, ruminant animals. So this is something I actually want to take out and cut down. But I'm going to think about, you know, is there a way I could use this cherry wood for something? That's a great wood that's used for smoking or obviously it's a beautiful wood for wood making. So here we got three different types of trees. I really want this oak to grow bigger. This is the perfect size for my mushrooms, so it's going. So now we're in sort of the pine woods area. That's the tulip poplar. Now this one's too big uh, to use the entire thing. So this is a huge tree, so we're gonna get a lot of cuts out of this. Now the reason I wanna take this one out is because right there, I believe, is another oak tree. So what I'll do is, I'll thin out these couple pines um, later on in the season when I can use them to make boards or uh, maybe a post for a pole barn. And then there's other smaller tulip poplars surrounding this and I'll let those grow up to be bigger in the future. So now when it comes to storing all the logs, pallets are gonna work great for that. So you wanna have them off of the ground. You don't want them sitting in a pile of leaves or raw on the soil because they can get invaded by other fungi that will colonize the log. And that actually happened to a few of my logs. Uh, so they kind of get ruined. You can still harvest a little bit, but you don't want that to happen. And they need to remain wet. You don't want them to dry out. So if they're in the sun, like this gets some sun, I'm gonna throw down either some of my shade cloth or frost blankets on top of this to cut the light, but it'll still let moisture through when it rains. They're gonna sit here for two to four weeks, and that's gonna allow for the tree's defensive properties to exit the trunk. Um, and then when we put in our inoculant, the mycelium will be free to run crazy in there um, and start colonizing the log. So I've got a lot more logs to create, so let's get back to it and chop down some more logs and give you some more concepts about how to select certain trees. So this is another great example of a tree that we can take out 
And this, if you see, there, I believe that this smaller one here is an oak tree and right next to it is an oak tree as well. And they're right next to each other. I don't need two oak trees right next to each other. Um, they're gonna block light from each other. Um, each tree will not be as healthy as if it was just one tree. So check it out. This is an ideal diameter for the logs. It's too close to another tree that I also wanna keep and let grow bigger and stronger. So boom, take it out. And what I did even before shooting this video was I went around and I located all the trees that I wanted to cut. I attached this high-vis tape on there and I even wrote with a Sharpie the type of tree that it was so that when I'm going out and chainsawing, I don't have to think. I already know which trees I'm gonna take out and why. So these are also forestry management principles. That's what I'm talking about, but I'm incorporating that into talking about finding your mushroom logs. So here we have four different trees right here. These trees are too close to each other. Um, so right here in the middle, we have beech. That's a great diameter. And also look at that tree. Uh, for whatever reason, early on in the plant's life, there was three growths that became three trunks. That is not ideal for any tree species really. So this beech will never grow up and be that healthy. It's also blocking light to these other three trees. And in an ideal situation, and you know how I think about my woods over time is, I'm trying to thin things down to the healthiest, best trees that will be the best long-term that will last for hundreds of years. So I've got a little less than half of my logs out here. I'm gonna spend the next day or two collecting the rest. They're gonna sit here for two weeks, up to four weeks is my window of time and then we'll inoculate them. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can see when my next video comes out uh, that will be about inoculating these logs.